Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are going to talk about this effect. Can you see the difference between this? The difference between this and this, the object will intersect with the water. Usually we just put some object into the this like a water cube and it looks all right. But if you really pay attention to the detail in the real life, you will notice usually have this tension between the water and the object. Water will pull up through this object and we will have this kind of highlight. So that's what we are going to make today. It is very subtle but yet very important to achieve the realistic water. We will have this kind of mesh around the object and that's how you achieve that using geometry node that is what we're going to make today it's fairly simple i think the result is really good and before we talk about how do we make this note let me show you the one that i made is much more complicated than this but uh, it's basically not too much difference it just got a lot of detail that you can control i will put this in my patreon and gumroad and after you download that, you just grab this, this water line V1 into your scene. And you will see nothing. That's because we need to do some setup for this water and this object collection. First, let's create a cube as a water. You already have some water in your scene. You can use that. Let's make it smaller. And we can name this to be water. Okay, and uh, let's create an object. Let's use a Susan. Okay, and uh, let's make some for this water. Let's create a material. Okay, now we have this Susan on the water. Go to this water line. The first thing we need to pick our water. And then we need to pick our object. But uh, you have to make it to be a collection because we can put multiple objects inside of this water. So let's create a collection. So this Susan now is, is, is inside this object collection. Now let's pick this to the object collection. Instantly you will see you have this object that is being created around the Susan. Now we, we just have the water line. Okay, and uh, you see this highlight. Even now we create like another object, maybe an echo sphere. And now we put this echo sphere into this object collection. We create uh, this water line. Okay, so let's see some other detail that we can control. Uh, this is the material for this water line. This material is important because it's not just like a water. You need some attribute inside of the node to achieve something. It will come with that and also this simple curve that is like a, how many cut you have so the smaller simple length will give you more accurate result and also this width if you have the higher width water will be just like more wider usually you don't need to be so wide even sometimes you want to be even thinner and this noise it just uh, instead of this so uh, evenly spread, you can have some noise for it to be not so even. You can have some part is wider, some part is thinner. And this is the flip normal. If we go to see this base orientation, usually it should be like that. It's all blue, but sometimes certain situation, the normal might be flipped to be like uh, this red it will be even more reflective in that case you, want, you might want to click on this flip normal okay and uh, this accurate sample is uh, usually you don't really need to click that but uh, sometimes maybe you you will find your waterline will be missing that's because maybe your mesh is too complicated you might want to click that it will give a more accurate sample but uh, it, it comes with cost it will be calculate a little bit longer the other important function it's this form if i click on this form you will have this like a bubble you can do something with it maybe you want less and the scale of course you can make it bigger or make it smaller some offset 
that you can bring it out. You can have some bubble out of the area. Take a look about this tree. It's much complicated than what we're going to do later. What we're going to do later will be without the form and without some control of this. But uh, basically, you can do the same thing. So that's what we're going to make today. It's fairly simple. Okay, now let's start making this water line. So in this brand new project, let's create some water. Let's also use a cube. And create an object such as Susan. And now we create a like a plan. Okay, and uh, that's name it to be water line. And let's create a jar machine on top of it. Jar machine called a water line. So that's pin this. That will be what we're going to work on. Set set up our camera. Let's make a material for this. Just make a, like a water. And you can use a HDRI for your background. Then you can make a material for your Susan to be a little bit darker. So it will be easier to see. Okay, now let's work on this water line. What we're going to do, we are going to use this water to cut out of this Susan using mesh boolean. Okay, so this is the the main node that we will be working on so we will cut out between this water and this susan so we will get this outer line of this intersect area it will be some kind of curve and we use this curve to curve to mesh to make a l shape and use that to be our water line and let's grab this water inside of this node and also the susan and set them all to the relative so let's plug this use this water as the mesh one and use the susan as the mesh two let's hide this susan and the water first what we got is this the water line now let's use a separate geometry we plug this from the mesh boolean to the selection and now we got this you see this this kind of curve that is what we're going to use so now we can turn on the susan and the water turn this to be a curve mesh to curve and then let's use a curve to mesh and now we we want to give a profile of this First, let's use a curve circle to test if it's working or not. So now we can clearly see this like a tube around the intersect area. You have to grab your Susan to see. So it's there. So it's fine. And now we don't need this. And now let's use a curve line. Okay, and let's try to plug in to the profile. And there's something going on, but uh, it's not easy to see. So let's turn on the wireframe. So you see this stuff. And that's because of the, the Z. Let's set it to zero. And we'll try to grab this. Make this X. Okay, just a little bit like a 0 0.1. You will see uh, now it looks a little bit cleaner. So that's what we are going to use. We want to make this L shape. Now we have this the bottom one. Now let's make uh, this the straight one. So let's use uh, join geometry and duplicate this and let's join them together. The top one is for this area. Just using a minus 0.01 for the start y axis and the bottom one for this one let's use a minus 0.1 on the x-axis okay so now let's use the value to feed them both value and uh, combine x y z and this is for the y and this for x
in some time you will see this whole thing will be flip will be like a weirdly missing that's because it flip it to the inside this is the downside of this effect for my version the complicated version i have a way to fix it but it's very complicated so in this like the easier version you just ignore that you just have to grab your object a little bit to make it make it to be fixed that's because of this this line we get it's sometimes it will be correct sometimes it will be totally flip 360 so it will be like the opposite direction and it's no easy way to fix that so just let you know you can ignore that unless you want to spend so much time to find a way to fix that okay so now we got this l shape but it's red so let's flip the face so make it to be totally blue and also we wanted to merge by distance although now we make this l shape but the these two lines, they are not really joined together. So we use this merge by distance to join them. So now if we use a subdivide surface, subdivide it twice. So you can get this L shape, but not so, so 90 degree. So without this merge by distance, you will not get that. So because it didn't really merge together so that's why we need to do that and now what we are going to do it's you see this part now we have this l shape and now we wanted to make the top part of the l shape to work on this susan so let's do that yeah we can do it before the subdivide after the merge by distance so what we're going to do is uh, use a set position so put the over here let's grab the susan and set it to be relative and we use uh, geometry proximity this to here and take a position we sample that position okay so now we can sample this position to this after we plug this in to the position you will see the whole thing including the bottom part it will be just like warping on this susan so we got half correct we use a mix vector and we take a position okay so this position it's the the original position so we can mix them in between so that is before and that is after and now we can use this factor to control which part we want it to be warping and the part we want to warp is the top part so make some kind of like a marker over here so let's make a stored name attribute and uh, let's name this to be l top and use the boolean click this value on and now we try to see named attribute and let's pick this l top let's try to see if we got this right this part is zero this part is one it looks like uh, we got it now just uh, try to plug this into this factor we got this top part is warping and the down part don't affect by anything but uh, it is a little bit too powerful so we wanted to dial down this little bit let it out a little so let's use a uh, like a math and just put it over here and multiply okay and uh, make it not totally one maybe 0 0.95 let's go to the cycle and uh, let's make a shader for that go to this water line and uh, create a material and let's make a water line okay and uh, just basically make it like a water okay and uh, we need to set material and pick this water line okay and uh, also the shade smooth that's what we got we got this working but uh, if we take a look over here we will see between the water line and the object we have this this line that is 
so visible that we don't want it. We want it to be a little bit transparent, to be a little bit smoother. So that's why we need some attribute right here. Let's take a look at how can we do about that. So after the warping and before the subdivide, let's find all the line of this mesh. We can use uh, edge neighbor to see the face count because this edge, it only got one neighbor, but the all the other edge that is inside of this outer line, it got more than one neighbor. So we can use this edge neighbor to get the area that we want. Greater than, so it's compare, greater than one. So let's store this. Store the name attribute and we just call that edge. Okay. Can use a factor for this so let's try to see this attribute let's call edge we got this so this part is zero and this part is one we can use this to set the alpha let's go to the water line and use the attribute and just copy this edge and plug this to the alpha and you will see you have this transparent and you can use a color ramp to make it softer and some other thing that we can improve for this shader now right now it is causing shadow it might make this part a little bit darker than what we want we can try to remove the shadow by using mix shader transparent and use a light path and using this shadow rate to here so it will be more clear but maybe not totally maybe a little bit little bit darker and also use this edge for the shadow okay so now you still maybe see some black area around the water that is because on this l shape the bottom part is too flat to the water they are intersect together so we kind of like a broken face so we wanted to bring it up just a tiny little bit okay so let's use um, transform geometry just over here is all right so now it looks better it doesn't have the this black area yeah so now this water line looks very beautiful that's it that'll be it for this video and thank you very much see you next time bye bye